All right. Uh, in each of these problems, the first thing we want to do is get the square thing by itself. So we take the square root of it, cancel the square, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how will we do that in this problem? Um, yes. You subtract six from both sides. Not subtract. It's not plus oh, six. Oh, divide. Six. Divide. Sorry. Divide six. Six. This cancels out to six. There we go. X plus four. The square equals three. So next, well, it's out. Yeah. It's, it would be, I think, a lot simpler to you know, take advantage of the fact that we have a square that we can cancel out with the square root. We take the square root of both sides. We get x plus 4 equals plus or minus. This is square root of 3. Since square root of 3 is not a nice number, we'll just we're keep writing it as the square root of 3. And one last thing to get us by itself. I just subtract four. Subtract four equals negative four plus or minus the square root of three. So there's two answers here, two solutions. Where do I get these two solutions? No, I just had a question. Did yeah. you have the minus four like after the three instead of like in front of? Are you talking about right here? Well, like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so what's your question? What? What's your question exactly? Oh, if you could have, like, the minus 4 in front of, like, the positive or negative of the square root of 3. Like, so have it at the end instead of at the beginning. Oh, like, so write it like this, you're saying. Minus 4? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. It's I'm just right. that when we write things like this, this uh, square root symbol has a tendency to creep over and uh, accidentally get the four underneath it, which it definitely shouldn't do. The square root of three minus four is not the same thing as the square root of three minus four. If you take four away from three, you'll have negative one, and there, there's no square root of negative one. Okay? At least not any real square root of negative one. Uh, so yeah, that, it means the same thing, just so that it doesn't look like it's accidentally under the square root. You know, you just get in the habit of writing it that way. But it's still the same thing. Okay, so where do these two solutions come from? <laughs> Say what? Yeah. What were you saying? X equals negative four plus. Yes, uh, negative four plus the square root of three, and negative four minus negative four minus the square root of three. If we want to get some decimals, we can do that. Negative four plus the square root of three. And bring it back and change it to minus, and hit enter, negative 5.73. Well, squiggly equal sign means uh, approximately. Does it matter which one we put in? Uh, yeah. No. It doesn't really matter, but I would say. If you want us to put it in one, we do that as negative four plus. Yeah, either one of these will be acceptable okay. to me. You have a very serious question. Yes. So you went all the way back to when we did when we canceled out the square root of x plus four. Here. And we, and we three. Yeah. So if you did square it right there, three would come out to one point three one point seven three, right? Yeah. Um, so you're saying this is what? Track four? No, I'm about that. Oh, this one. Yeah. Uh, are you saying I wrote it down wrong? Uh, so you said it's 1.7 minus 4. Uh, no, shake them out. So, you know, negative 2 point something. Is that, who is that? Ethan? You had a question? Yeah. So instead of writing like the square root of 3, we yeah. actually wrote the square root of 3. Yeah. Like, like 
the decimal. Yeah. So like on your paper it says negative four plus one point seven something. Yeah. Well, yeah. if it looks like that, then I go ahead and add them together and then okay. write the final result. The the only thing is you don't want to get in the habit of um, writing rounded decimals throughout your problem. You would want to get the decimals as a as a habit at the very end. If you can keep everything as exact as possible and if you really want a decimal, get a decimal at the very end. This is exactly right. This is approximately right. It's okay, that's fine. That, that's a good answer. But if you're <coughs> rounding your decimal places here and if there's another place, you know, in, in more complicated uh, calculations, if you keep rounding your, your answer could be off by a couple hundreds, a couple tenths, a couple of, you know, off by two or three, just depending on the situation and if you're multiplying, all that kind of stuff. So that's why I kept it the square root of three. And maybe you have the very end, take negative four plus whatever the decimal was. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, any other like homework problems that you want to look at? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Forty. approach here, we want to get the square thing by itself, we cancel out the square with the square root, so how do we get the square thing by itself? If we multiply, we get 4 thirds times this thing, so if we multiply the whole thing by 3 fourths, we'll cancel out the fraction here, multiply this by 3 fourths, that's 5, cancel 3 fourths, so k minus 6 squared equals 15. Exactly like the problem we just got done with. Take the square root, cancel out the square, the square to this side, k minus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 15, k equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 15. Just added 6 to both sides. And then if you want to find the decimal for each of these, that'll be fine. The, it would be useful to find the decimal if we say we're using this for like a real life application. Uh, and we wanted these answers to tell us how many feet we're supposed to make something, or how many gallons we're supposed to use, or how much we should pay for something. Then we want to get a decimal so we actually have a grasp of what this number is worth. Okay. But these answers are exactly right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Other questions? Um, again, I recommend that you watch the video. The video covered that. You know, if you had a question about how to get rid of a fraction, uh, I definitely went over that. So there's, there's examples for each problem. There's one up right now for uh, the current homework. So uh, I recommend it. And if there's no more questions, then I guess this was silly because we have to do a review before we even get going. So let's get out a piece of paper. Um, so here's a what I would call a simple one. It's just got an x squared. Is that parentheses squared? X squared. So we want to get x squared by itself, and we take the square root thing. So we'll add 10. We have 2x squared equals 10. Divide by 2. Square root of both sides. Cancel out the square. X equals equals what? Square root of square root. Five. Square root five. Exactly right. Or you might have plus or minus what the decimal? Two point two four. Point two four. Might be like that. So first we'll add 15, cancel out that 15. So 15 plus 5 
Plus the square root of 22? 0.31. 0.31. Mm -hmm. Negative 5 minus the square root of 22? Mm -hmm. Negative 9. The top one is negative 2. Oh, a negative 0.31. 6.9. What? They didn't do that part? Yeah, the top one's not even close. Top one's not close? No. But if they didn't do either one, were they little? No, that's fine. The top one's not close. This is fine. Happy with either of these? No. Happy with both of these? No. This is wrong? Yeah. What do you think it is? Right. Right? Right. Let's see. We got negative 5 plus the square root of 22. Negative point three one if you're down. I don't even understand. Maybe you, did you actually do positive 5? No, I square rooted both of them and then subtracted and added. Okay, so check them from the positive and negative. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll come around and look at it in just a second. Okay. Uh, square out of eight. I get three minutes. What? I'm confused. This one's for two minutes. Every time you guys are messing around, uh -huh. I'm just gonna make a note of it. It'll be another minute. Maybe a minute. And then we'll do that many minutes more, and so on. And then it'll be break time once we do all that. Oh. All right, so all I want you to do right now is uh, look into the recesses of your mind. Remember how we've already done factoring. I just want you to factor each of these, okay? That means you're going to break it into two parentheses like that, right? That's factoring. So that when we multiply together, we get, in that case, x squared plus 2x plus 1, x squared plus 12x plus 36, so on, okay? So just factor all four of those. We're going to notice they all have something in common. So I'll give you a few minutes to work on that. That's what I want you to be doing. All right. So has anyone, well, I know some people have. Yes, factor the first one. 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 Okay. Got the next one, though. Got the next one. Six. X plus six. X plus six. Wait. 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 Ask somebody else. They're not going to know, though. Yeah. That's presumptuous. <laughs> X I don't even know that way. Yeah, Hunter? X minus three, X minus three. I didn't even listen to, to Megan. Oh, okay, X minus three, X minus three. And the last one? Yeah, I got it. X minus twenty-five. X minus twenty-five, X minus twenty-five. No. Okay. Yes. So, if you didn't have it before, uh, just a quick reminder. Factoring this means we're going to break it into two parentheses so that when we multiply it together, we wind up with this again. So we got x squared plus 6x plus 6x again plus 36. Right. And these combine together to give us that 12x in the middle. Yeah. So I said they all have something in common. What do they all have in common? Perfect yeah. squares. Perfect squares. What? Mm -hmm. They are perfect squares, really? Like they both have like, they both are positive or both are negative? Yeah. And not only that, but they're also the same number, right? They're both positive, six, both positive, one, both negative, three, both negative, both five. So, uh, and, and the way Connor said it, they're perfect squares, which means... We can write, if this is x plus one times x plus one, we can write it like this, x plus one. Square. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, imagine if that was involved in an equation, then we could use we could take the square root 
instead of having to set each factor equal to zero and all that kind of stuff, that approach, we take the square root of both sides. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to take any quadratic equation now, write it like this, so that we have two perfect, uh, you know, identical factors. We can write it as that factor squared and take the square root of both sides. Uh, use that approach rather than the old way. And the cool thing about that is it takes quadratics before that were not factorable, and therefore equations were not solvable. You couldn't, couldn't solve it if you couldn't factor it. Uh, it takes those and makes every quadratic equation solvable if we, uh, if, if we can turn it into this, what's called a perfect square trinomial. Okay. What does trinomial mean? What about this is a trinomial? Three. You got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's trinomial. It's a perfect square because when you factor it, it's a perfect square of factors. It's got two factors that are identical, which is a square of factor. So now let's take it to the next step. We're going to figure out what would make something into a perfect square trinomial. So I give you x squared plus 12. No, not we already did 12. Let's do 14 x plus. And then we'll just leave that blank. So we already have it? Yep. What'd you say? 49. 49, that's correct. x plus 7 times x plus 7 x plus 7 squared. Right. Somebody other than Derek this time. Come on. x squared plus 20x. Not Derek. Come on. What? Nothing? What would be that a constant that you would add on that would cause it to factor as a perfect square? Tyler? 100. 100. X plus 10. X plus 10. X plus 10 squared. And we'll do one more. Somebody other than Derek and somebody other than Tyler. X squared plus 22x. I still have 22. It has to add up to this number right here, right? Mm -hmm. And it has to be identical. So what did I just describe? I described half of a number. What? Two identical numbers that add up to some number. Uh, right? If I take 5 plus 5, I get 10. Well, 5 is half of 10. If I take 12 plus 12, that's 24. Well, 12 is half of 24. So this guy here is always half of that. Half of that. And this is the square. Whoa! Okay, let's see if we're all getting it. <laughs> um, let's do 30. Okay, to yourselves, on your own paper, if you come up with it, come up with it, I'm going to come around. Okay, you we figure out what the number is? Yeah, it's 225. It is 225. How do we come up with that? 15. How'd you come up with 15? Because 15 plus 15 is 30. Because 15, that's beautiful. Even better than 15 is half 30. 15 plus 15 is 30. Yes. 15x plus 15x. Because that's what we get when we multiply this out. We know we want them to be identical. Why do we want them to be identical? So we can write them like this. Mm -hmm. So that it can be part of some equation. And then we can use that to solve the equation by taking the square root of both sides. So what we're doing now, by filling in this blank, is called completing 
Right, we're completing something, it was blank, and now we filled it in, it's completing it. Completing the square. Really? The square, the perfect square trinomial. Figure out what the magic number is so that it factors just so. All right, everybody feel good about finding that? That blank, filling yeah, in the blank good. there. I think I found the blank. <laughs> Follow Megan's example. <laughs> Plus um, 26x okay. equals. Okay, doing the view. So now we're using completing the square to solve the equation. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what, you know, what fills in that blank, so. 159. What? 169. 169. Yep. Ah. Okay, great, perfect. But, remember how it started. It started out as the equation x squared plus 26x equals 14. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And now Derek told me to do what? Add. Add. I did. Yeah, you did. Add what? 169. So on the left side, out of nowhere, I mean with reason, but just completely from my own mind, just brought in 169 under the left side of the equation. So what do you think we should do? Exactly. 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 Well, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other, right? So what if we just did this? We add 169 to this side, so let's add 169 to this side. It'll be balanced. Right. Right? As long as we do the same thing to both sides, we take the square root of both sides, we add 169 to both sides, we divide by 5 on both sides, we subtract 76 on both sides. Whatever we do to both, whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So now on this side we have uh, 173. Right? 73. And on this side we have something that factors. How does it factor? 13, x plus 13, x plus 13, x plus 13 squared. What do we do now? Huh? Square root. Take the square root? Yeah. You're going to bend it. x plus 13 equals plus or minus the square root of 173. Subtract 13. Yeah, that was good to start. That's what I, I made up this part yeah. and this part. Derek found 169. Added it to both sides. Take the square root. Subtract 13 from both sides. Okay. Before we take a break, are there any questions that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Sure? No. Okay. Uh, yeah. Come on. That wasn't really just a question. It's making me look foolish. Any questions? Nine. That's Jeremy for now. Okay. And let's take it with the X squared plus um, 24X. That's uh, minus 24X, so it's different. Minus 24X. Okay. Right now, the left side of this is, um, well, it's factorable, but it doesn't factor the way that we wanted to factor it. The only thing we can do on the left side is to factor an x. That doesn't do us any good. The whole idea here is to get it so it is something squared so that we can take the square root of both sides. It does not factor like that right now. What would we have to add on to it so that it does factor, and how would it factor? Uh, what? Well, it's the same thing as before. Oh, 144. Right, there's this blank spot, or we imagine a blank spot, or make a blank spot, we move it this over, make room for that perfect number. If that number's not there, and if we just say, 
you know, x minus 12 times x minus 12. Well, what do we get when we multiply this out? Yeah. Plus 144. And so there's a plus 144 here. It doesn't factor as x minus 12 times x minus 12, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Right? Yes. So we need to add that 144. Ah, now they're the same. Now it factors the way we want it to. But what else do we have to do now that we've done this? Add it on the other side. So it's 161, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that uh, equals 161. So you succeeded. We found the right number. We completed the square. Now it factors as two identical factors. We can write it as something squared. Okay. Why did we do that? Why did we get it as something squared? What can we do now? Um. No, the symbol was right, but the word was no. Square it. Square root. Rooted. Take the square root of both sides. X minus 12 equals what? We're supposed to actually find square root of it. Well, you can if you want to, but I square root of it. Positive or negative? Positive or negative. That's what I'm looking for, the square root of 161. And the last thing, get rid of that 12, add 12 to both sides. You get x equals 12 plus or minus 161. It's different. There's a number there. So in our way, it's, it's up to no good. What do we do about that? Okay. I want you to. If you don't come up with a solution, that's okay. I want you to think about it. What are you going to do about that? You know, the way it is now and how it's different from the problems you've been doing. All right. So um, this is not like the the one we just did, right? How's it different from how these last two started? There's not already more. Yeah. It's not like. A, yeah, there's a number there, and it's not the right number. Yeah. Okay. What number do you want it to be? Um, 16. You'd rather have that be 16 than 45. So we just need to find some mathematical way to make that happen. Not have 45 there and have 16 there instead. Hilde, what do you do? Subtract 19. Subtract. I mean 29. 29. From 45. So if you subtract 29 from 45 and wind up with 16, is that right? Okay. So. If we subtract 29 from 45, we get 16. So on this side, we'll have x squared minus 8x plus 16. So we should also do what? Subtract from the other side. What do we get? Negative 3. OK. That seems like a pretty good idea to me, because we get 16 that we want. So here we just get negative 3. Uh, why did you do that? Why did we put a 16 there? Because the factors. What? It's 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. So we get x minus 4 times x minus 4. That's how it factors, right? Two identical factors, so we can write it as x minus 4 squared. And the whole reason we did that, the whole reason we found 16, the whole reason we wanted to factor as x minus 3 squared is because what? What do we do next? Take the square root. So now we get x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 3. No. Do you have anything to say about that right now? Can't. Can't? So what do we say about the solution? No solution. No solution. Because it's already a negative. Because you can't? Well, why is it? Why is there no solution? Because if you add a negative to a negative. Add? Or multiply. Multiply. OK, so what Ethan is saying here, at this step, this is a no-no. Because when you take the square root of negative 3, well, what is it? Well, if it's the square root of a number is 
is a number that multiplies by itself, exactly itself, right? Uh, let's use let's use the square root of like negative 25 as an example, so that you know, it makes more sense. Is the square root of negative 25 five? No. No, because five times five is positive 25. Mm -hmm. Is it negative 25 or mm -hmm. sorry, negative five? No, because negative five. Negative, 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 negative times negative is positive again. Yeah. So there's no way to find a number that multiplies by itself to give you that negative number. So that's why there's no solution because you're taking the square root of a negative. Okay. Great. These two examples are where we throw a little more of a hitch in there and uh, you know, get a little bit of a problem. Yeah? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, but we'll probably not even go that much. We just have time left anyway. All right. Well, what do we do about this? It was easy when, simply put, this number was even. You could divide it by two, but now that doesn't happen. But still, we wanted to factor into two identical factors, so we can write it as something squared. And well, we you know we still want that. So how will that look? How will it look? Six point two five. What's that? Six point two five. Six point two. Yeah, because two and a half and two and a half. Okay, so we still want half of the number, right? Even though five doesn't split into two nicely, it does split into two, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two. Five divided by two, five halves. Yeah. Nice plus five halves. So that's how we want it to factor. Now, this right now, that's how we know that we want it to factor. But if we multiply it out, we're going to have to take a five halves times five halves. That's going to be 25 fourths, or 6.25, right? Mm -hmm. Then we need to add 25 fourths to the other side. OK, so this is going to be uh, 8 fourths. Right? Get a common denominator there on the right side. So we get 33 fourths. It's not pretty, but it works. What if we did as a decimal? What if, still what if you do? Yeah. Then you just have the problem that I said before, like as you put decimals along the way and you start to start taking square roots of decimals, now it's off by a little bit more. These are all approximations. If you're gonna do decimals, do like to four or five decimal places until you get to the end. And at the end, do like two decimal places. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, lots of decimal places to work with. All right, so this is x plus five halves squared, and this is thirty-three fourths on that side. Here's a big payoff. The whole reason we're doing this because right now we get to do what? <laughs> what? Take the square root of both sides. X plus 5 halves on this side, plus or minus the square root of 33 fourths on this side. Right? And. Okay. Subtract 5 over Subtract 5 halves. Oops. So we get negative 5 halves, plus or minus the square root of 33 fourths. Just a quick reminder in case you're thinking of trying it. You want to subtract 5 halves from 33 fourths. Can't subtract things like that. It just doesn't. Right? You cannot subtract a number from, that's outside the, the square root to the number that's inside the square root. Don't do it. That's it. If you want to find the decimal, then we can take negative three, or sorry, negative five halves, add the square root of 33 fourths, subtract the square root of 33 fourths, so those are two solutions. What? There are fractions. You just uh, use parentheses and like division. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll show you up here on this calculator, which is the same. So if I'm going to take this all at once, it's like negative 5 halves, right? Just use the divide, and it gives me negative 5 halves, mm -hmm. plus the square root of 33 over 4. Good, make sure that all fraction makes it inside the parentheses and not the square root. 0.37. Uh, so if it was like 4 over 32, uh, is that considered a whole number? Or do you want that to have to simplify 4 that? over 32? Like say it wasn't 32, but it was 32, or I mean 33, but it's 32. Oh, yeah. Do you want us to simplify that? Yeah. yeah. So, right, that is the square so it would be the square root of 8. Right. Okay. 
and then we'll just bring this back and change it to minus sine to so completion on this negative five point three. Get to this one in a second. I'm going to have you work on one like this one where that thing is not divisible by two. It's not even. It's not work out so well. Just make sure you're patient, careful, and keep track of everything. And I would suggest that uh, you keep it as fractions, or if you assist as, as writing these, dec these, write these numbers as decimals. Uh, if they're not exact, then round them out to four decimal places. Okay? If they're exact, then hey, they're exact, and it works out nicely. Oh. So have an x squared plus 3x minus 4. Um, no, I don't want to do minus 4. I want to do minus uh, 5 equals... So this is a little bit different from the, the problem that we just did because there's this thing in our way, right? there's this thing that we don't want it to be. Mm -hmm. with, um, with this one, yes. Hildy suggested that we subtract 39 so that we get 16 on both, or yeah, subtract 39 so we get 16 on the side. That's, it becomes kind of a headache on, in, in this example. How about if we just get rid of the five? all together, and now we create a blank spot. x squared plus 3x plus the blank spot equals 25. We just got to figure out what's going to go there. Okay. Well, we know what the factors are going to be, right? Mm -hmm. It's always going to be half of that. Mm -hmm. Three. Yeah. 1.5. Is that 1.5? Plus? Fraction? 9 over 4. Yeah. Can we divide? Uh, yeah, divide three over two, you will put Now, this is x squared plus three halves x plus three halves x. The three halves x plus three halves x. That's the three x. Plus three halves times three halves is what? Well, three halves times three halves is a fraction. Just multiply two across across right. nine fourths. So nine fourths, that's what we need right there. Right? Yeah. We need nine fourths right there. So we need to nine, add nine fourths to the other side. Well, I'll erase this because we're just multiplying it out. So, mm -hmm. so this would be a hundred fourths plus nine fourths x plus three halves squared on this side equals a hundred and nine fourths. And now we take the square root of both sides. X plus 3 halves equals 109, or plus or minus the square root of 109 fourths. Subtract 3 halves on both sides. You're struggling with one like this where that number is not divisible by 2. Yeah, two examples that we worked in the lecture, that video will be there. There's also another one for the homework, that'll be there. This is some kind of scary faces. x plus 3 halves 
squared, we're going to get a 9 fourths there when we multiply 3 halves times 3 halves, plus 9 fourths on this side. Okay. What the hog? Okay, so this is negative 8 fourths plus 9 fourths, that's 1 fourth. Mm -hmm. Make the square root of what? <laughs> X plus three halves no. equals plus or minus one half. Okay. The square root of one fourth is one half, right? Yeah. One half times one half is one fourth. Yeah. X equals negative three halves plus or minus one half. So we should get exact answers here. One half. Hey, come on, give me a break. We're almost done. We don't have to be talking. Get one. Negative three halves plus one half is negative one. Yeah. And negative three halves minus one half is negative two. Good job, thank you. Kind of lost it in the end there.